Hello, hello, hello. Got my globe here. And tonight's live stream is going to be a very important piece. This being Black History Month, I wanted to take this time to talk about this topic is going to be about migration. In particular, I want to talk about the Great Migration. Hold on one moment, I'm going to put a post up and show that I am online. So if anybody wants to go and be a part of it, it's in the link. Hmm, I think I'll do that later because it's not showing up. I'm going to go to live, see if I'm up live or somewhere. Live somewhere. I don't see anybody in the chat room or anywhere, really. Oh, I gotta do, I gotta switch it up and do a live stream. I don't see it anywhere. Oh, well, I'll deal with it later. I'm going to talk about the Great Migration. And this topic is very personal to me. It's very near and dear to my heart because the Great Migration, there were actually two waves of it. You had the first Great Migration, which occurred right around World War, right around 1910s, 1920s. And then you had a second wave of the Great Migration taking place during, the next bigger wave took place during the 40s and 50s, you know, from World War II going into the 1950s. And it's this topic is near and dear to me because I actually have family members who are part of this. My father being born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, two parents who were born and raised in Mississippi. And, you know, they were part of that great migration. And my father was part of that generation of African Americans born up north, born and raised up north. And, I think, you know, for me, it's personal. And I think this is one of the reasons I want to do this live stream. I want, first of all, I want to cover the geography of it. But first, map. I hate to use this map, but... Got a map here of the United States of America. And we're gonna start here in the southeast. Even today, there are more African Americans living in the southeastern United States of America than in any other region in the United States of America. And you know, I live not too far from Atlanta. You obviously have this, you know, I want to talk about, I'm going to do a little bit of a, make it short but sweet on this, and then I'm going to get into more detail later. The first wave of migration out of the south, you know, went up during the Great Migrations. You had people going up to St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, New York, Philadelphia going to those areas. And then you had the next wave, which was occurring during the 40s and 50s, you know, going to the Western United States and to other parts of the North. And this time, and my grandparents were part of this migration. My grandparents were in Mississippi, which is right here. They were in Mississippi and they went up here to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, went up here. You know, that second wave, this time it went to more cities. It went to places, you know, 
people were going not just to Detroit, not just to Chicago or not to New York, but they're going out to Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco. They're going to Minneapolis, Milwaukee. They're going to Denver. They're going to Seattle, going to Portland. You know, they're going all over the country this time. And, you know, that's how it started. Well, by the way, Jackie Robinson was born in Georgia. And he and his family went to Pasadena, California, which is near Los Angeles. And I am going to focus back on me. Now, I showed you a shorter part. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. You know, obvious, you know, for obvious, you know, the big until about 1910, nine out of every 10 black Americans lived in the Southeast. They were living in states such as South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida. You know, they were living in the South. And one, you know, one big reason why they're in the South more than any other region had to do with slavery. Because you take into account, you have to really think about this. You're in the South. And, you know, slavery has always been it had always been a big part of American history. And I don't really want to get into too many details about the Civil War because that's going to, you know, you think about the causes and the factors that went into the Civil War between the North and the South fighting. I don't want to go into that. I don't want to cause... A you know, obviously it's going to cause a storm. I have, you know, because there is information that I can post, that I can put up. But I understand that some people are going to react in very adverse ways. And this particular live stream, as near and dear as it is to my heart, is going to be a very, it's going to be kind of, you know, uh, I'm just trying to keep the peace. So, I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to see if I can share this. Let's see if I can tweet. Back. I just put that on Twitter. But... One of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of the Great Migration, people migrate for whatever reason, for many different reasons. And as it applies to the Great Migration, let's just go back to the fact why, nine, why up to 1910, you had at least 90% of the USA's African American population living in the South. First of all, why were so many African Americans in the Southeast? Well, slavery was a big part of that. And you have to think about, think about the geography. You think about why so many African Americans were in the South. They were there as slaves. They were there basically doing, you know, the slave labor, you know, in the fields, in the cotton fields, a whole new meaning. And, you know, there are some push factors and pull factors. What's pulling so many African Americans to go to cities like Chicago, Detroit, New York, Philadelphia? Well, we can at least talk about Detroit. The thing that pulled, that pushed, you know, the pull factor that got so many African Americans to go to Detroit... The automobile industry, you know, Ford, you know, the Ford plant 
you know, the Ford plants in Michigan have been, you know, have a history of employing so many people on the assembly lines and that pull factor, the jobs, the jobs are what cost so many people and not just African Americans, but so many people from all over the world to migrate to Detroit. But in the case of African Americans, you know, that migration to Detroit, you know, it's very important why so, you know, so many people migrated up there, especially from states like Alabama, Georgia. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to pull up Google Earth because I do not want to mess with that paper map ever again. Not now, anyway. Pull up Google Earth. Here it is. And I'm really going to have to plug this phone in soon because it's on low power. But you look at where you look at where Georgia and Alabama are. You look just how many people have migrated. You know, how many people have migrated, you know, from Georgia, Alabama, and it's like, you go directly north, you make a beeline north, and you're in Michigan. You're in the Detroit area. So that's a pull factor. Jobs pulling people. Oops. You know, you have jobs pulling people from the south and north. And there's also something else to consider. The south has long been a very agrarian society. And here in the south, especially in places like Georgia and Alabama and Mississippi, cotton. You know, cotton is a big crop. Cotton was a big crop. And during, you know, during this time, during the Great Migration, another factor was the devastation of the cotton crop. You had the boll weevil, which basically, it's a parasite. It basically destroys cotton crops. And that caused a lot of problems. And that was another, that was a push factor. That was one thing that, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of black Americans that were living in the rural South, were they were literally working on the cotton fields. You know, they were the sharecroppers. And when you're living like that, you know, you're living, you know, you're living on the land, you you get your living from the land, and then your living is destroyed basically because a pest goes and destroys the crops. That caused a lot of problems. A lot of people found themselves having to search for other resources of employment. Many went to the cities. Now... There were some, there are many who went to Birmingham because Birmingham was a major steel producing center in Alabama. But so many African Americans bypassed Birmingham and went to cities like Cincinnati. You know, they were going to other cities instead. They're going to cities like Cleveland. You know, going to Cincinnati, going to Detroit. And then out of Mississippi, you had so many African Americans who went up to Chicago. In fact, Mississippi was the main state in which African Americans were coming from and settling in places like Chicago and also St. Louis. Now, you notice something. You notice a little bit of geography here. You notice Mississippi had so many migrants go up to Illinois and some went to Indiana. But, you know, Alabama, Georgia, many of those migrants, many migrants from Georgia and Mississippi were going to Ohio, going to Michigan, now, you had some migrants from Mississippi go to Ohio, too. Remember, you had African-Americans from throughout the South going north. 
and some did go west out to California during the 1910s, 1920s. And one of those African Americans who went west was Jackie Robinson and his family. But when you really think about it, this was one of the main, one of the big push factors for you know more African, you know African Americans going north was the destruction of the cotton crop, the uh, the bull evil. Many African Americans also went to New York City, New York City, Philadelphia. Some went to Pittsburgh. The steel mills are there. You have a lot of the steel industry in Cleveland, a lot of the steel industry in Youngstown, Ohio. You know, you have the automobile industry in Detroit. And then you have Chicago, which is a multitude of different, of so many industries. You had the meat packing plants in Chicago. You had steel mills in Chicago. You had just so many different industries in Chicago. And there were jobs to be had. Now, there is also another push factor in why so many Africans were bypassing city. You know, I mentioned earlier in the video that many African Americans bypassed cities such as Birmingham. You know, Birmingham being a major steel producing center and with so many African Americans being in Alabama at the time. And now one would think, you know, Birmingham would be the logical choice to go to. It's nearby. And there are steel mill jobs to be had. Well, there is another reason why many people decided leave Alabama and go to some go somewhere like Ohio or Michigan. And it boils down to a very dark and scary chapter in the South at this time. Jim Crow. You had you know, don't get me wrong, you had racism all over the United States of America. It was up north too, it was out west too, it was everywhere, but the you know the Jim Crow laws were in place in states like Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia. They were in place in those areas. They were in place, you know, they, the Jim Crow laws were in place throughout the, for, throughout the South. It was the law of the land. And you had so many, you had so many other problems, such as lynchings going on. You had just the type of environment during that time in the South was so oppressive that many African Americans, for them, that was a push factor. It pushed them to leave and go somewhere else. Pushed them to go to states like Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. It pushed him to go to other places, not only, you know, for the jobs, but for what they would perceive as a less oppressive social, economic, and legal climate compared to what was going on in places like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, those areas. You know, you have push and pull factors. You got pull factors, you know, pull factors that'll pull you to a place, you know, Places like Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, New York, the jobs were the pull factors because you had so many people, you know, so many factories running, so many people that were, you know, people were needed in the factories. And these are also cities that were attracting so many people from all over the world. Chicago, was, Chicago had long been attracting people from throughout the world. Chicago became a major industrial giant because, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you know, I'm going to show you where Chicago is. We're going to discuss Chicago. See, this is what Chicago is to the United States. Chicago is very far inland and yet where it is. You have the railroads, the rail, a lot of railroads meet here. And then you got Lake Michigan here. 
big, basically Lake Michigan is like an inland sea. And you had so many industries, you had the economic and the transportation geography come together to make Chicago a major port. And then, you know, going all over the world, you know, you can literally reach the ocean from Chicago. You just go up Lake Michigan, go through the Straits, and then go through here. And by the way, Detroit is one of the busy. Detroit became one of the busiest waterways in America because it's on the Detroit River. And it's like an anchor. It's like, it's like, it's not on any, it's not on any of the Great Lakes, but it's on a place that sort of anchors the Great Lakes together. And then obviously ships are going through the St. Lawrence Seaway. That is sort of, you know, a little geography lesson of what makes places like Chicago and Detroit, what made those places industrial giants. You know, you were on busy waterways. Now, that would explain the first big wave of the Great Migration. World War II. Many African Americans were continuing to go north. They were continuing to go to places like New York City, Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit. Hold on one moment. I will be right back. Sorry about that, but I'm going to have to, I have to put a charge on the battery because this, if I don't, this live stream will be ruined. And here we go. No, I do not want to do anything. But I'm going to give you a little idea where more people were going. More people were leaving the South during World War II going into the 50s and 60s. World War II did something. See, during World War II, they had to produce munitions. They had to produce ships, airplanes. And so now you're having more African Americans going to places like California, Oregon, Washington State, where a lot of the shipyards are. They're still going to places like Chicago, Detroit, Detroit was like the arsenal of democracy. You had so many, you know, so many munitions being produced here. They're still going to places in the Northeast, but now they're going out to places like California, Colorado, Washington. They're going to Oregon now. They're going, you know, they're working in the shipyards out in Los Angeles and San Francisco. And they're going to work for the airplane factories out in Seattle. They're going to work pretty much in many areas that are just, you know, you had factories that were building airplanes and ships and submarines. And you had that going on. That was, in the, you know, World War II became sort of a push-pull factor all in one. World War II pushed so many people out of the rural areas and you still have the push factor of Jim Crow segregation in the South. That was pushing a lot of African Americans away. But the pull but the pull factor of jobs in the factories, you had more you had a much bigger, much wider distribution now. More and more people were going more and more places now. And this continued into the 50s. Now you had more African Americans going to places like Minneapolis, Milwaukee. More were going, you know, going to more areas.
and hold on one moment. I will hold on. You had, you had just this migration people just going all over the country now. People, you know, people are still going to Detroit, going to Cleveland, Cincinnati, or going to Chicago still. Now they're going to Milwaukee. They're going to Minneapolis, St. Paul area. And now they're going to places out west as well. And you kind of have to look at some of like the sources, like a lot of African Americans from Mississippi still going up to Chicago, and it's kind of like because they had been going up to because many African Americans had been going up from Chicago from Mississippi to Chicago before this sort of you know that hierarchical diffusion. People keep going up. You know, you have this, you have something called the Blues Highway because, you know, you think about the blues and you think about that music, how it sort of developed in Mississippi. And then you look at how many people sort of followed the highways going up in the railroads, going up to Chicago. And you had so many, you know, you have to think about the railroads. You know, so many people are going to go where they can you know, you're going to go where the railroads can take you. And, you know, you had so many direct lines going up, a direct line of transportation going up to Chicago. You've got, and I find it interesting that today so many of the highways, you know, so many of the highways are going, um, hold on one moment, I have to, I'll be right back. I got to do, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I I don't live by myself, so it's like I kind of I get distractions right now. But I find interesting that where it goes, you know, take it land. Come here in the layers. Remember. With GIS, you got to learn layers. Layers. You notice now, so, you know, take with I-75. I-75 meets here in Atlanta. And then... Seventy five going up through northwest Georgia. Now I want to show you something. Seventy five goes up through Cincinnati. 75 goes up through Cincinnati. And eventually finds its way to Detroit. 
I-75 will connect Atlanta to Detroit. I find it interesting that there were a lot of migrants from Alabama and Georgia that went to the state of Michigan because there are a lot of roads that lead there. Interstate 65, let's see where that leads. Oh. No, that's not 65, that's 69. I'm just going to put I-75 I goes through Nashville. But let's follow 65 for a moment. I know. Pay attention, please, because it's important to know how to use a map and use it well. Going through Louisville. Sixty five is going up through Indiana. Ooh, and then it goes through Indianapolis. Goes to Lafayette. And it and well it doesn't it leads to Gary, Indiana. Now there were many African Americans that from Alabama that went to Illinois too. So that could also be, it kind of threw my theory out of the water. Why many African Americans from Alabama went to Michigan? Because I figured it was interesting that you had so many roads out of Georgia. I figured so many, you know, 75, it goes up to Detroit from Georgia. So I'm thinking maybe there's a highway from Alabama that'll go up to Michigan. Sorry about that. I, I, I don't know what happened, but I showed you a few things. Showed you the geography and mentioned some push and pull factors that would make a lot of people want to go somewhere. You know, from 1910 to 1970, you know, from... 
from the beginning of the 21st century going into the 60s, so many African Americans were going to cities such as Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, Milwaukee, New York, Philadelphia. They were going to places in the northern states and in the western states. There were a lot of push factors and a lot of pull factors. You had pull factors such as jobs and a social climate that was perceived to be better than what was there in the south at the time and then you also had to do you also the push factors one of the push factors being the demise of agriculture well not so much the demise of the cotton crop in certain parts of the south through the bull weevil during the early 20th century and then you also during the 40s and 50s there's something else i forgot to mention cotton farming was being mechanized so you needed less people to do the work and that put a lot of people out of work as well. So many people sought jobs in the cities, went further north. And the push factor was Jim, a big push factor was Jim Crow segregation. When you had the, the Jim Crow laws, when you had very oppressive social climate, legal climate going on during those times, it pushed many African Americans to go north to seek not just opportunities elsewhere, but more, you know, a place where many feel would feel that would be less oppressive in terms of the laws and discrimination. And that was what pushed people like my grandparents to go north. It pushed people, you know. My grandparents were looking for more opportunities. They were looking for more freedom. They were looking for a place that had a far less oppressive social and legal climate than what they were experiencing in Mississippi. And so for that reason, they left and went to Wisconsin during the late 1940s, early 1950s, where my father, he would be born and raised in Milwaukee. And that would be... For me, it's more, to me, this is personal. It's personal for me because my family history is part of this. And, you know, I look at the, I also look at it as a geographer. I look at so many push factors, pull factors, why people migrate where they do. And you should look at migration from that perspective. You look, because, you know, people move, you know, geography, you have that is about movement too. Movement of people, movement of things. And in this case, I'm talking about movement of people due to different factors. Now, now you have another, now you have, since the 1970s, we've had a reverse great migration. I am going, this great migration, however, you have so many Africans. Americans moving to the South again. They're, you know, the biggest, the main place this is taken, the main city to focus here is Atlanta. Atlanta, home to the nation's busiest and the world's busiest airport, home of the 1996 Summer Olympics, home to Center of Disease Control, Home Depot, Chick fil A, Delta Airlines. What's going on is, you know, man, you know, with the Jim Crow laws being declared unconstitutional and other factors such as jobs declining in some cities like Cleveland, Detroit, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, many people that had had jobs in the industry, in the industrial sector, many people started to move south again. This time they're moving to places like Atlanta, Charlotte. Charlotte is a major banking center in the United States. And there's Charlotte right there. No, that's Raleigh. <laughs> Charlotte's down here near the border with South Carolina. You had so many people moving. And now you got people moving 
you had and there's another you know my as you know race relations starting to improve and there's also that migration continues today you have many african americans moving from the northeast united states moving from cities such as boston new york city newark new jersey moving from philadelphia many people find jobs in places like north carolina georgia one thing to consider cost of living it is markedly cheaper to live in north carolina than, and georgia than it is to live in new york you know you have a push factor of it's really expensive to live in the new york city tri-state area that factor is pushing many people of different races and ethnicities from the New York City tri-state area to places such as Atlanta and Charlotte. And it's also pushing people to places like Texas. Texas is growing. You know, Texas is attracting a lot of people. I once lived in, by the way, I once lived in Fort Worth for a few years. And I also lived on the West Coast for a few years. If you wonder why my channel logo is blue and green like that, it has to do with my childhood that I spent out here in the Seattle area. I lived up, I lived in the Pacific Northwest for a few years, hence why I'm a Seattle Mariners fan. But that's neither here or there. But you look at where a lot of people have migrated and why people migrate where they do. When you think about this new great migration back to the South, many African Americans are coming back. Many have family ties in this area because while a lot of African Americans left going to places in the Northeast, the Midwest and out West, many had family members that stayed. And so there were many people who had ties down here. Some people who worked their whole lives up North went to the South to retire because, you know, you have that push factor of the cold climate in the winter. You know, if you're living in Chicago or Milwaukee or Cleveland or Detroit and you want to retire somewhere warmer and you're thinking, why not retire down here? You know, I might have, you know, you think and retire where you got family or many people, you know, in the South, the South, there's, you know, more opportunities now in recent years, in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s and beyond. People are moving to places like Atlanta, moving to Charlotte, moving to the state of Virginia, specifically around the D.C. area, around northern Virginia. You also have the presence of the military down here in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, that area, Nor Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Portsmouth. You also, many people are moving to Nashville. Nashville is a growing city. Many people, many people want to move here. You know, lower cost of living, you know, you have growth and in industry here. Automobile industry is actually starting to is establishing itself in Nashville around the Nashville area in certain areas around this region. So what what I've noticed before, a lot of people that were leaving the South, they were leaving the South from so many different places. And there are also African Americans that had left Texas and Oklahoma. And now you have African Americans moving to Texas. But you it was before so many African Americans were just leaving this region altogether. And now you have a migration back to the South, but it's very concentrated. You know, it's not just let's you know, it's very concentrated. It's concentrated in places like Atlanta, Charlotte, Raleigh. You know, Nashville. It's very kind. You notice you're moving to areas, major metropolitan areas where there are a lot of jobs, a lot of opportunities, moving to places where there's more land, 
you know, the cost of living is lower. And many people move to the South because they want a warmer climate to live in. Many people are also moving to Texas for the same reason. Growing cities, a warmer climate. And now that Jim and Jim Crow is not the law of the land anymore, it is unconstitutional. There are no more Jim Crow laws anywhere in America. Many people, many African Americans are moving back to the South. I'm actually part of that, you know, my, I'm part of that generation, you know, of African American. My dad is part of that, you know, he's moved, he moved to Atlanta. We moved to the Atlanta area in 1996. We had lived in the South once before, lived out West and the South again. It's sort of like, I'm part of that generation of the reverse. That is what I have to say about the Great Migration and the geography of Great Migration and just the push and pull factors to consider. I would like to shout out a few people. I would like to shout out my Patreons, Atlas Schmatlis, Freelance Ronin, Scott O'Neill. I would like to shout out all three of you. You have been contributing to my Patreon and for anybody that would like to donate or be a Patreon, I'll put a link in the description box. And as always, be sure to leave a comment. I noticed nobody came on to this live stream. So when I end this live stream, you can watch it again on replay. I'm thinking about re-uploading it. Be sure to leave a comment like and subscribe and keep learning geography because there's so much out there to learn.